recording how in full screen and begin. Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. It's good to be back, and it's good to have you back. Uh, in this series, we're going to be making a procedural bookshelf, as you can see, uh, where we are not only making procedural books of any size, shape, whatever, uh, but a bookshelf where these books sit next to each other, perfectly uh, positioned, and the bookshelf kind of adjusts to the largest book, so it kind of adjusts its size. Uh, this is going to be a three-part series, where in the first one, we are going to make a book, in the next one, we are going to be making them so that they actually align next to each other, which is not intuitive really how to do because each one's a different size, so you can't just say have an even spacing. And in the third part, we'll do a bookshelf and render it. Uh, as for the number of nodes that we are dealing with here, um, it's quite a few. <laughs> so this is the nodes, and this is the node network uh, just to make a single book. So if this seems interesting to you, keep watching. Let's begin. Probably should have saved. Uh, so with a cube, go to geometry nodes, go to uh, geo nodes and make this a geo nodes object. And here's how we are going to make a book. I'm going to start off with a grid. And by the way, the reason this is so obvious to me is because I played around with this a bunch, right? I had to experiment, figure out what was correct and move on from there. I started off with a grid. I then deleted one of the edges. So make sure this is set to edge. And for the selection, we're going to say delete the edge that is equal to index equal to zero. And we're going to make this a two by two. So you can see we had a grid that was four sides of a square, and I deleted one edge. Uh, actually, this node setup lets us pick which edge we are deleting, because we're looking at the edge index, of which there are uh, zero to three, but we deleted one. And then we are saying, which one do we want to delete? I'm going to delete number two, so that we have kind of like the staples logo, or more accurately, a staple uh, facing downwards. And this is useful because we can now kind of bevel out these corners and then do a bunch of extruding. So I'm going to fillet this curve, not fill this curve, but I'm going to fillet it like a fine salmon steak. Uh, of course, we need to turn this into a curve, so mesh to curve. Uh, this makes it a curve object that we can fillet using a set number of polygons. And this is something we want procedural control over, so I'm going to make this a, a parameter. So you can see this is kind of like the, I wouldn't call it the binding, but it's kind of the curvature of the binding of this book or of the cover. So you can pick that. Uh, next, what I need this to do is kind of extend this way so it's as long as a book. And to do that, I want to select the two endpoints of this and scale those, or sorry, move those downwards. Because if we scaled the entire thing, it would lose proportion. Uh, to do this, we just select the endpoints. There's a node for this, endpoint selection. Default settings are fine. We are going to set position, saying that we want to only affect the endpoints. So you can see only these are affected now. And I want to move them down a certain amount. This is also something we want procedural control over. So I'm going to combine X, Y, Z and make a, a parameter for this. So as this grows, as it becomes more negative, Maybe the way to do this is to multiply by negative one, so we're dealing with positive numbers. As this becomes larger, uh, you can see our book is also becoming larger. Now, to actually give this dimension and turn this into a cover, uh, what I'm going to do is turn this into a mesh and do some extruding. So we are going to extrude mesh by edges. Now we have the converse problem. Before we had a mesh that needed to be a curve. Now we have a curve that needs to be a mesh, such as life. Curve to mesh. Boop. And you can see, now we have something with thickness. I'm going to make sure this goes upwards across the uh, Z uh, vector, so 0, 0, 1. And we want to control the height of this. And after we do that, we want to give it some extra thickness. So I'm going to extrude mesh by faces, not individual, and set this to kind of a smaller number. And you can see how this is the cover or the binding of our book. Um, I guess we also want procedural control over this one because this is going to be exactly the height of the book. And if you want it to be very stringent and make everything a parameter, you can control the thickness of the book. So I'm going to make this exposed as well. One thing you're going to notice is this isn't exactly a cover because it's kind of hollow or kind of hard to explain. Uh, we should go to wireframe. You can see it's kind of hollow in a sense. Um, it's missing this component that we want to join together. You can kind of see right here that this isn't kind of a manifold closed mesh. 
Uh, to kind of seal this, I'm going to flip faces of the original. This is because uh, when you uh, extrude it, it's going to have or correctly oriented normals, but our original will not. So if we want to merge these together, you need to flip faces. We need to join these pieces of geometry. This is the standard extrusion method, and we need to merge these. So if we now look at this mesh via the um, face orientation, you can see it's all blue, whereas if we did not flip the faces, the normals don't necessarily align. Okay, so that's the idea behind that. So, uh, review, what do we have so far? We can control this height of the book or the cover, and we're gonna put the pages in in a second. Uh, we can control kind of the length of it, so how big the page is, and we can control kind of the curvature, which I guess we should limit. So click limit radius, and this will make it so that you can't go past a certain point. Next, what I wanna do is I want to add in the pages. Remember, we do have this uh, curve from before, that we can now, and this is the beauty of curves, we can now fill this curve to kind of get the sealed mesh right here. Uh, let's see, nope, you don't want the curve to mesh, get the node before that. Uh, we can get the sealed mesh. We can then extrude it on faces, um, not by the same amount as before. So if I extrude it here and then join it with this geometry, you can see it just kind of fills in what was missing before but I want to extrude it by a little bit less. Uh, to do this, I'm going to take the extrusion value from before and I'm going to multiply it by 0.9. So I'm saying make it 90% as uh, uh, extruded. Uh, but you can see we want to center this, right? We have a bit of a gap here and no gap down here. So to fix this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the difference. I'm going to say give us um, the thing minus minus the uh, scaled down version. So give us the, how much we were extruding minus 90% of it. In other words, 10% of the thing. And we want to take this and divide it by two, okay? So what I wanna do is I want to extrude by 90%. This is still the case. But now I want to off-center this with a transform by that function that we just made. The difference divided by two on the z-axis. And you can see uh, this centers it uh, down here and up here. And just like before, uh, if I look at this mesh, you can see it's not uh, airtight, and we need to do the same thing from before, where we flip the faces. It might be useful to make this into a node group, but whatever. We flip the faces, we join them, and then we merge by distance. Just so we have a, a sealed mesh here. So let's see. Uh, we want to flip the faces of this version and we want to transform it as well by the same function. So let's see, this is our page block and this is, at, or sorry, this is our page block with merge distance and this is our cover. Uh, we merge them and there you go. Uh, only other thing to do here is you can see we have this gap here and down below, but we also want the gap over here. So it's kind of like there's a constant offset between the page and the edge of the cover. Uh, to do this, to do this, all we need to do is we need to set position of the endpoint. So remember, originally we had this. All I need to do is I need to modify this selection to make it just a bit like pulled in a little. So to do this, I'm going to, and I know it's getting messy, a bit of node spaghetti, but that's okay. Vomit on your sweater already. Mom spaghetti, impromptu rap about Blender. Everything I do is a motherfucking suspender. Blender, render, send her to the grave. There's these moments where you're like, should I put this on the internet? Okay, either way, what I wanna do is I want to offset this by the amount. So I'm gonna take the thing divided by two and offset it on the Y axis. So you can see here's the before and the after. And then, you know, we extrude it, we do the thing, and let's see if that gives us what we want. It does, it does. And notice that everything we, do, we did here is kind of procedurally controlled by this 0.9 value. So you can say what kind of gap should we have margin, in a sense, uh, between the cover and the uh, pages. So I'm gonna make it, instead of 90%, I'm gonna make it 95%. Uh, but this is totally something you can also turn into a parameter. Uh, which I didn't do for my original. So, so far, what do we have? 
we have a book with four parameters here, okay? The first parameter is going to be the margin, how big are the pages relative to the cover. And by the way, we should save this. I'm going to call this procedural book, and it's going to be available on Patreon. Link in the description. If you do not want to make this yourself and you just want to play around with the notes, you can download it there. And if you want to support what I do, etc., we have the margin of the pages. We have the height of the book, and notice everything plays well with each other. We have the length of the book, and we have the uh, curvature of the book. So if I wanted to make this, if I wanted to make this uh, less than, should we also add one for the thinness of the book, a fifth parameter? Might not be a bad idea. Well, let's say we wanted to do that. How would we do that? Well, we originally had this, and everything kind of builds from there. So if I was to transform this, so I'm just adding an extra parameter here. If I'm going to mess around with the scale, so we can uh, scale on the x-axis to make it kind of thinner in a sense. If we were to add this as a parameter, now we have five parameters for the book. And let's just see if this plays well with everything. So we already played with the first four parameters, and now this fifth one should be the thinness of the book. Beautiful. So we can say how many pages are in the book, right? The thickness of it, in a sense. How uh, curved should the uh, kind of binding be? How big are the pages? Uh, what is the height of it? And that, what is that page to thing ratio? So this lets us create pretty much any book we want. It doesn't let us open it, but of course, uh, maybe I'll do a tutorial on that at some point. So we can take all of this, turn it into a node group, control G, so we now have five parameters that control this. We could actually give them names and be reasonable about this. Or I'm just going to play around with them to kind of get a good looking book. Something like this. And this lets us make any book that we want. So for example, if I wanted to make a very thin pamphlet, I'd kind of make this so it doesn't have that much curvature. I'd make it very thin like this. Maybe I'd bring up the page ratio so it only has a 1% margin. And uh, that kind of looks like a pamphlet. I guess like one thing we would want to control here. There we go. That's a pamphlet. Uh, one thing I'd want to control here is kind of the thickness of the cover. I think that's one thing we don't have control over at the moment. So let me just add that in. That's going to be simple. Uh, remember we... Can I look at this node spaghetti and know what is going on? Uh, it's one of these extrusions. I believe it's this one that gives us the thickness. Uh, if we expose this as yet another parameter and connect that here, uh, we now have control over the thickness of the cover. So I guess really the last thing to do here uh, with our procedural book is we should just give names to these uh, parameters. Uh, I can do that off screen. You know, this one is kind of the roundness of the thing, you know, length, etc. I'll do that off camera. Uh, but uh, the main thing, the main takeaway is we now have a node group that I'm going to name book, label that here and here. Uh, that creates any book that we want. So the next step is now creating a bunch of books randomized, you know, randomizing these six values to generate different books and putting them side by side by side, and then we'll generate a bookshelf, etc. So it's not immediately obvious how to do that, but we will get into it. So uh, let's uh, move the camera. Uh, what did we learn in this tutorial? How to make a book. I think that that's pretty clear. So if you want to download the uh, blend file and not make this yourself and kind of build off this project or use it for your own, uh, there's going to be a link in the description for Patreon. I really appreciate all 600 to 700 of you active patrons, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Deuces.